If you really enjoy a good sheet of smartphone specifications, you're gonna be pretty happy with this. Lenovo has just announced maybe the most insane looking smartphone, but something's a little bit off. So last year, Lenovo announced their flagship smartphone, the Z5, and they created a whole load of fake hype to get people excited for it. They made it seem like the phone was gonna have a 95% screen to body ratio, four terabytes of storage, and a 45 day battery life. They talked about how it was going to come with 18 new technologies, and well, this was what we ended up getting. The way they'd gone about teasing the phone, they'd never explicitly lied, but they were manipulating the truth. For example, the company's vice president stated that they'd be announcing a product with 4 terabytes of storage at the phone's launch event. So obviously, people are going to take that leap and assume that it is the phone that's going to have that feature, when actually it was a cloud storage drive that they just released alongside it. Fast forward another year, and it kind of seems like the company is doing it again, this time with their 2019 flagship, the Z6 Pro. But that doesn't change the fact that it might well be crazy value for money. First things first, it's got the Snapdragon 8 55 paired with up to 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. And we've already seen its supposed Antutu benchmark score of, wait for it, 403,077. That would make it a world leader in performance, with even a 10% gap over the Xiaomi Mi 9. It'd be pairing that with PC quality liquid cooling to sustain that performance, and that's not a small feat, and it's actually only the start of a really impressive spec sheet. It supports 27 watt fast charging, so more powerful than OnePlus's dash charge, and pretty close to their new Warp Charge 30 standard, plus a weighty 4000 mAh battery. You're getting Dolby Atmos audio, the latest Android 9, and an in-display fingerprint scanner that supposedly works even with wet fingers. It's even got a 6.4-inch AMOLED display with support for high-contrast HDR10 content. Something I like is that it can reverse charge other phones using a physical cable connection, which will actually be faster than the current trend of reverse wireless charging. And here's the bit that you weren't expecting. It starts at $430. So for that price, you're getting the model with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. But still, having all all that other stuff seems like an absolute steal, and would pose a massive threat to Xiaomi's offering. But the whole thing just seems a little bit off to me. One of the main things that was teased is the camera, and turns out it's a quad camera setup with a few really interesting perks. The main sensor is 48 megapixels, it's got an ultra wide camera, but this time with a 125 degree field of view, which is even wider than the S10's 123, which in itself is wider than Huawei's. This means it can not just capture even wider shots, but can also get closer to subjects, it doubles as the super macro camera. The third lens is a telephoto, and the fourth one, it's something they call the super video camera, and it is just there for video enhancements. They've even got a time of flight sensor on top of all of that, and if you flip it around to the front, a 32 megapixel selfie camera. It has got everything. And so it all seems pretty good so far, but a couple of months ago, Lenovo's vice president did a presentation, which is actually where he announced that this phone was coming, and at the same time, he talked about how they were working on three things, 5G, next generation hyper video, and a 100 megapixel plus camera. They didn't give any details on what this hyper video would involve, but it sounds exciting. And 100 megapixels is over eight times the detail of the Galaxy S10's 12. So, in exactly the same way as happened with the Z5 last year, and it's supposed 4 terabytes of storage, people got really hyped for this phone. The VP even sent out a message on Weibo, containing both the hashtag Z6 Pro and the hashtag 100 megapixels. So like, he's obviously trying to build hype at the same time without promising anything. And then he sent a second message, showing that the phone could juggle 4G and 5G using two separate SIM cards. Anyways, during the launch event, it turns out we're only going to be seeing 5G on the Discovery edition of this phone phone to come out at some undisclosed point in the future. They literally didn't even mention anything about 100 megapixel photos, but the phone does come with this hyper video they've been going on about. At least we now do know what that means. It's actually not one thing in particular, but it's the name that the company gives all of its collective camera modes. So this super wide angle mode, you've got this super macro mode, as well as a super night mode. This thing can record HDR video, it can record portrait video in 4K apparently. And this is all impressive stuff, but at the same time it's a little misleading to say that one big thing is coming, and then for it to actually just be a whole load of smaller things that already kind of exist. 
One thing of note, which they didn't mention, is that the main supposed 48 megapixel camera this phone has is based on the Samsung GM1 sensor, a weaker sensor that we've actually seen in even cheaper phones. And it can't actually capture true 48 megapixel shots without using software to piece things together. So let alone 100 megapixels, even 48 is kind of a stretch here, but it actually gets stranger. Lenovo showed a side-by-side -side of their new phone against the Huawei P30 Pro, taking video in low light, and even though Huawei's is the best smartphone out there for low light video, and costs twice as much, the Lenovo seemed to come out on top. So either this phone is a complete game changer for half the price of a flagship, or this whole thing is an elaborate misleading setup. And Lenovo is about to get a lot of flack. All I can say is there are a lot of questions, I'm going to try and get hold of one to answer them, and I will let you know. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be massively appreciated if you could subscribe to the channel. And in the meantime, I'm off to find some dodgy Chinese retailer so I can try and import this thing.